wonderful day today. I hope you had a successful day um, at whatever you were doing. Um, today's uh, project is the Percy Coles on Maxwell Road. Uh, and um, we're going to have a presentation on that. And then, as we normally do, we're going to have the the session where the section where uh, questions can be asked, or you can give um, your two cents about something that should be changed or something that was not talked about. Perhaps um, I would ask, as I always do, please, please let one person talk at a time, um, and. Uh, Please uh, do not dominate. If you've been talking a lot, give somebody else a, a chance to ask questions. Um, I am going to ask my presenters if they will please keep up with what is in the chat room. A lot of times uh, people will put things in the chat that they don't want to ask out loud or don't ask. So please uh, have somebody monitor that so that that can come up. Um, and we will go ahead and go with this. I want to thank very much Ms. Roseanne, as I always do, uh, because she is um, so great uh, at uh, fixing this up and making sure that every everybody is um, okay and on. So hopefully you won't have any uh, trouble with this. Um, I just to let you all know, uh, I don't think I told you all last meeting. I don't think it happened last meeting. Uh, if you haven't been seeing me post anything on my F Facebook page lately, it's because I am locked out of Facebook. So not only can I not get to my personal Facebook page, but I can't get to my community one now. So I think I have to um, start a whole new Facebook thing. I, I don't know how. It's um, some special security that they put on there that said, I needed to put on my page, so I'll figure it out, but um, that's why you haven't seen anything posted uh, from me, but we have been posting um, anything that needs to go up to the uh, District 33, um, and you still have my email. You can email me if you have any questions or if you need anything. So right now, it looks like we have a small group. Hopefully, sometimes people come in late. Um, so I hope you don't have to re go over a bunch of information that you're going to give, but I'm going to ask, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to ask uh, that you go ahead and introduce yourself and give a, uh, a short synopsis about uh, where it is and what you have to offer. And then um, people will have a chance to comment, ask questions or whatever. And thank you again for everybody being on here. Let me ask you this, uh, John Honeysucker, is, are you on there, Mr. Honeysucker? I can't always see all the names. I don't oh, see, I see him. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Um, and I didn't know if anybody was on here from the mayor's office that I needed to, um, that I needed to address or ID. I guess not. So I guess we're all ready to get started. Thank you so very much, and I'm turning it over to you now. Great, thank you. Thank everyone for joining us. Uh, this is our third community meeting we've had. Thank you, Ms. Lee, and thank you, Roseanne, for all your help uh, going going forward and in the past. Uh, Brandon, if you could, if you could share the little presentation we have. Yeah, it's a new platform. Let me. I'm clicking share content, but it's not let me do anything from there. Roseanne, do you maybe need to uh, grant permission or anything? Let me see, share content. Sure. I'm already making my presenter. Sorry, technical difficulties here, I guess. Your web browser? Can you fix anything or are you guys just seeing the screen? I'm still just seeing the screen. It says you are the presenter though. That is weird. Suzanne, you might have to talk him through what he needs to push to be able to get it. Yeah, this is new. We were having some problems or some people had some complaints um, about the Facebook one. So we went to Web WebX. Yeah, that's fine. Roseanne, if you can talk me through it, I'm clicking share at the bottom of the screen, but then it just doesn't. 
Pull up your, you what was that? Pull up your file under the wherever you've got it saved. Uh, share your web browser. This is very, yeah. Every time I click share, it's just not doing anything. Matt, are you able to? I'm trying. I'm trying to see if I could do it. Have you pulled your item up out of the, out your computer? Yes, ma'am. I've got it running. I mean, let me see if I can pull it over to here and see if that makes any difference. Apologize, everybody. Let me let me see if I can share it. Let's see here. Here we go. Start. I've got, I've got it. it. I've got it now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It wouldn't let me do it without my camera, but it won't let me share my camera. Cool. There we go. Can you see that? Uh, yeah. If you could hit the. There you go. You go to the next page and make it large again. What in the world? Uh, okay. now on my individual uh, can on my individual laptop, just to let some know, at the top there was a plus sign where I could actually make mine bigger too. So um, I don't know if individually you can do that to help a little bit, but yeah, it is very small. If you can push that little, see the little camera up there. Up in your top row in the red, Brandon. Yeah. It's not really a camera. I'm not sure what it is. If you click on that, it should make it full screen. And then you should just be able to toggle left and right. This is strange. Let's see if you can go to the next page. We can try it like this. Can you see this at all? Or what are you seeing? I see the, the first page. There you go. And if you can. Um, up on the the red low up at the top, the top ribbon. Yep. The uh, one, two, three, fourth icon with the little looks like a little TV on a stand with a little arrow in it. If you click that, it should make it full screen. The TV with an arrow. This one. That's kind of what it looks like. I've lost you again. No. I did not understand what is going on it's sharing the screen on my other um just showing you this small slide can you click okay. on the next slide here yeah go back just push your arrow back there you go push your arrow back nope okay slide show play from beginning down the very bottom there's a little looks like a tv on the stand go back to where you were I don't know. I think you guys are seeing something different than my. Go back to your PowerPoint. Okay. Original PowerPoint. Right there. Go to the bottom of your screen where it says notes, display settings. Yep. Make your, okay. Keep going to the right. And there's a little box there. It looks like it's on a stand. There you go. Click on that. There you go. Is that um, better? Click on. Um, slideshow, let's see. Let's see if I can click. This might work because it's going to multiple screens. What about now? Yes. Okay. There we go. All right, Matt. Okay, sorry about <laughs> that, everybody. <laughs> Okay, can you go to the next page? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, maybe. There you go. Okay. Okay, so we are proposing, uh, we, well, let me start over. We, we're at, this property is at the very end of Maxwell Road, the far east side. It composes of uh, three separate parcels currently owned by the Jenkins family. Uh, it totals approximately 24.5 acres. You can see it there kind of highlighted in a orangish red color. 
Um, the property surrounding the site to the north, to the east, and pretty much to the south is all uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. You can actually see Percy Priest Lake uh, up in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, directly across the street from the proposed project is a uh, property owned by the New Living Hope Church. So they are in the process of, of starting their site work for a new church for the community there. And if you look to the southwest of the property, you'll see the existing uh, and under construction DR Horton uh, Heritage Landing community. It's currently under construction. There's probably about 140 or so families Maybe, maybe all the way up to 150, 160 now living in that community with more homes under construction. Um, and then to the uh, west of the new living Hope Church, west and south, there are two uh, remaining kind of one acre parcels. Uh, I think they're actually a little larger than one acre parcels uh, with a couple single family homes on them. And then to the west of that is the Davenport Downs subdivision which is uh, owned by American Homes for Rent. So it is a rental community. It's actually kept up really well for a rental community. And then to the west of that is the existing pepper tree forest community. Um, to the, if, if you go south of Hurricane Creek, there's no access to there. That's actually the city of Laverne down there on the uh, south side of the creek. So there's a pretty wide floodplain just south of the property, it stays off the property, except it clips the very southwestern corner of the property right there. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of where the, the property is situated. Brian, you want to go on to the next screen? So the current property is zoned AR2A, and we're proposing for a rezone of RS10 to the property. The Heritage Landing community to the south and west is also RS10, and then that um, American Homes for Rent community is also RS10. Um, that would leave just two remaining, the two remaining single family homes that are AR2A and then the church property across the street. And then of course the surrounding property is core property. Um, it's in the T3 suburban uh, neighborhood evolving policy area and planning felt that this was an appropriate uh, rezone considering the other RS10 in the near vicinity of the property. Um, we're proposing a, a mix of alley load and single or uh, front load product. Um, some of that product will face directly on Maxwell Road with the larger lots, uh, very similar to what is at the Heritage Landing community next door. The, there's a total of 86 single family lots, uh, 24 of those being alley and 62 being non alley. Those numbers could fluctuate when you get into actual uh, construction plans and real engineering design. The community would connect via sidewalk to the existing sidewalk that's being installed by the Heritage Landing community. This would provide a pedestrian connection all the way down to the core property at the very end of Maxwell Road. Currently, Maxwell Road just dead ends. Uh, there's a core gate there but there's no real pedestrian access to it. It's uh, managed by TWRA, but it, it does provide public access. Uh, there's uh, our side of the of Maxwell Road would be improved with a curbing gutter section, just like is happening over at uh, Heritage Landing and uh, as Davenport Downs did as well. Um, the sidewalk connection would also connect to a trail system that we would, we would weave through the site, mainly on the southern end of the property, down close to the uh, core property, kind of closer to the floodplain, but to the north of it. And it would reconnect back into the neighborhood and then you could circulate through a, a sidewalk uh, back to the sidewalk on Maxwell Road. And we're planning to provide a little community park down at the southwest corner, just north of the floodplain, uh, around three quarters of an acre roughly. Um, again, that exact size would, would nail down with the construction plans and what's feasible, but I think that's about where we'd be. Uh, we're proposing, because we are right on the Hurricane Creek, we're proposing uh, several different rain gardens or bioretention areas on the south side of the development. Everything pretty much drains to the south. So we'll be collecting that uh, and treating it on site and hopefully uh, you know, absorbing as much into the ground as we can. 
Of course, there is a lot of rock in the area, so we'll probably be creating some artificial bioretention since uh, we won't be able to absorb directly into the existing bedrock. Um, some of the other concerns that we had or, or questions we had were from the community in previous meetings were about street lighting, making sure the community is lit. Um, we're showing some conceptual street lights on here now, but kind of hard to see. Um, but we will definitely have street lighting throughout the community to make sure it's it's good and lit. Um, as a lot of people know, this the end of Maxwell Road uh, has has kind of been in disrepair for a long time. There's a lot of um, trash. Um, there's sometimes vehicles just parked down there. Not real sure what maybe goes on doesn't go on down at the end of Maxwell Road. So we think this is going to um, uh, provide more ve vehicular circulation. Um, it's going to discourage people from just coming and sitting. Uh, the new church as well across the street is going to do the same. So I think this is going to really revitalize this this area right here. Um, the uh, Sorry, I'm trying to zoom in. Oh, the one of Ms. Lee's concerns previously was some traffic calming within the community. She had mentioned that she was afraid that that cars would get down here at the end and just kind of drive real fast through the neighborhood. Um, so we've provided some proposed traffic calming measures in the form of uh, speed humps, and of course, any of those would be uh, reviewed and approved per Nashville Department of Transportation. Um, other than that, those were a lot of the the items that had come up previously. Uh, we're planning to do uh, no vinyl on any of our homes, only hardy with brick and stone. Uh, hardy is a cementitious siding, so lasts much, much longer um, than a vinyl would. It's just a better long lasting material along with brick and stone uh, accents on the fronts of the homes. Um, and Brandon, you want to move on to the next page? I think I've kind of hit a lot of the items that we've discussed. Walking recap. trails, you know, public sidewalk, and I, th I think those are kind of some of the highlights that we'll have in the community. Um, you want to move on to the next page? Show you some of the, this is kind of the, the home product that would be uh, used. Move on to the next one, Brandon. These are some and of the newer some, ones. Yeah, these are some of the newer ones that we've been developing that we'll be putting in there as well. And uh, the next one is kind of this, those are photos of the ex of what you see now at the end of Maxwell Road. So um, we're hoping to revitalize that. And that's kind of our short presentation. I don't want to take up a lot of time so that Ms. Lee, you can ask questions or anybody else can. Yes, please. Um, you have you all have presented before and these were some of the concerns that were brought to you by the community. Um, do I have other people because I know there may be some. That um, were not on the last meeting or anything. So, please, um, if your hand is up, or if you just want to ask a question now would be a great time to do that. Matt, I can't while I'm presenting, I can't see anything in the chat. So this will have to be all you. Yeah, I'm, let me see if I can figure this out. Yeah, this oh, web is can. new. There we go. Oh, I think I closed the chat. I found my chat at the bottom. There was like a little, uh, there's a little blue that says chat, and then there's a bl little blue circle, and you hit on that. Yeah. I didn't I've see anything. It. Okay. I've got it up here. So John Stern said to everyone, can you integrate any of the following community standards into your proposal? So, like, we're integrating all of them. Okay. Y yes, I think that that we would work with Ms. Lee to integrate these into the into the council bill, for sure. And then, construction practices, posted signage, no work on Sunday, et cetera. Yeah, this is, these are all things we've done at Heritage. Yeah. Yeah. No work on Sunday. Yep. I don't see that. Where is that, Brandon? Short-term rentals prohibited. No more than fifteen percent. All that should be covered under HOA. No more than 15% of total units Correct. can be rentals. Rentals must occur one year or longer periods. Yep, that's all part mm -hmm. of our HOA. Very, very standard for us. Yes, um, yes. Yep, I see uh, one of the things I think Mr. Stern put on there, no fencing within five feet of right away. Yeah, we typically actually 
for side lots such as that, we typically keep them 10 feet off. Um, five feet's really too tight up against the right of way. I know at Heritage Landing, we're not allowing any uh, fences within five feet of the sidewalk. We keep it at 10 feet. And then the fences on the on the house can no, go no long or no closer than halfway up to the front of the house. So we don't extend fences all the way to the front of the homes. And then I see you want me to forward this info to canerstrust.org and that's easy to do. Mm -hmm. Complained about the Zoom application. I, I guess that goes to you, Antoinette. Um, John, was you this not, was this information was this information not given to? Um, I'm sorry, my baby is barking now. Was this information mm -hmm. not given to Miss Roseanne? It, yeah, the presentation was, but I might have not provided everything. We've worked on. We gave the original concept to her. Okay. So if Definitely. you include to her everything that it is that you're presenting tonight, then she can forward that to everybody who is on this, please. Yeah, of course. I'll uh, mm -hmm. I can copy it down to a PDF and send it out. And just one other thing that I wanted to address uh, when you were saying the rentals and you were saying mm -hmm. that that was going into the HOA. I think another issue with rentals is um, since this is so close to that property where they are renting out all of the homes. Uh, you know, we had that conversation that you, that no company will be able to buy, that they're only homeowners being able to yeah. buy. So hopefully that That's will correct. stop companies for, from buying out like a row of houses to rent them out or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we, we deal with that in our heritage landing community and we, we, uh, we make sure that we're selling to individuals. So. This is not a, a property where we want to turn it into a, a rental community. No, not at all. Um, I see. Yeah, Mr. Price talked about uh, attempting to treat buyer retention areas as amenities. Uh, no, they're. I don't think. I think we're just calling them out so you can see where they are. We're proposing them. They're definitely not uh, amenity. They're a part of the infrastructure. Um, yeah, we're going to try to make that. You know, we'll plant them so that they at least look nice. So they might be considered an amenity, but we're not saying they're. One of the amenities, now, the amenities would be the uh, community park, southwest corner, um, the walking trail system that we'll have through, and then the, the small little playground that'll be for the uh, neighborhood. That's kind of internal, internal to the block, and then the the natural open space will be left down along the floodplain and then along the northern boundary of of the property. So the I know, uh, Mr. Stern had said that there's no true open space. I I would somewhat disagree. I, I feel that we're providing some formal open space with the open space uh, community park that we're going to provide, uh, and with some uh, playground area. That's more of a formal open space, and then the the passive open space along the southern boundary with the walking trail. That a decent amount of that area is going to remain. Uh, open without any development in it. You, you may have already talked about this. I think we talked about if there were going to be any dead ends, what uh, you could do at the end of those dead ends to make sure that, um, you know, bad stuff doesn't have uh, happen down at those dead dead ends. We talked about lights or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely providing street lights throughout and make sure that because it, it is kind of a dead end area so we're going to want to make sure it's lit up well um typically what we'll do is we'll work with nes to make sure that the lighting is there but i think we can within reason not make it like a runway uh but we can provide some more lighting than typical um just to make sure that we've got plenty of light for the community yeah those three lights are bright too very What improvements are you supporting in money to Maxwell Road? Deal Horton is adding a lot more traffic on Maxwell Road based on the traffic study. Yeah, so we're going to be providing the continuation of the infrastructure down to the end of Maxwell. And then along with our Heritage Landing community, the, the area that we're improving will be retopping Maxwell Road. Um, I'm not, I haven't been down Maxwell in a few weeks, so I'm not sure if many potholes or anything have opened up. I know that's been an issue throughout the city here 
over the past few months. Um, how many acres are you committing outside the floodplain stream buffer stormwater retention? Um, I may ask Jubal with Gresham Smith. He's our engineer and planner on this. Uh, we're proposing currently approximately 8.75 acres of open space. Um, Jubal, do you recall how much is in the floodplain? There's not a whole lot in the floodplain. No, hey everybody, this is Jubal with Gresham Smith. There's, um, you can see the floodplain line is that squiggly line that parallels uh, Hurricane Creek down there at the south end. So it um, it just cuts the corner of the property down there at the bottom. Yeah, so it's it's out of the 8.75 acres, it's, I would think somewhere around an acre, maybe less than an acre. Right. Floodplain. The majority of the majority of the site yeah. is completely out. Stormwater is included in that number, but we're you know this is bioretention and it's going to have landscaping in it, and we're we're really trying to sandwich that walking trail between the undisturbed floodplain and some of those bio areas um, to make those areas a little bit more natural and provide a little screening between the homes and that trail. So we're 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 trying to make better use of the or the best use we can be. Some areas. So yeah, so the public will be able to utilize the walking trail through that area. Um, you know, you'll you won't be sandwiched up against homes. There'll be at least some open space there, and then they'll be able to walk to the community park, back to the public sidewalk, make a loop, head out towards Heritage Landing, loop down all the way into the Hickory Woods neighborhood um, if they wanted to to the south. Yes, Mr. Stern says, but the public can't play in the stormwater features. Correct, they cannot. That's why we're providing the community park, the south south uh, southwest corner of the project. Explain more about tree preservation. So we're gonna we're pro we're proposing to provide the uh, buffer along the northern property, and then. Uh, as we work through the grading plan, we'll determine which which areas, which trees we can preserve and, and not preserve. The um, we're gonna our goal is to keep in the community park keep as many large trees as possible. A lot of the trees on the property are are cedar. Uh, a lot of them aren't very tall. Uh, there's a lot of kind of scrub material on the property as well. Yeah, I know a lot of this in the middle of it is actually very open, so it's just the outer perimeter that has the densest mm -hmm. portion. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, exposed bedrock on the property. So because of that, there's not a lot of deciduous trees on the on the existing property. So as I said, a lot of a lot of cedars. We have anything else? Are there any um is there anybody on here that is uh, that actually lives kind of in that area that wants to um, make some comments or uh, ask some questions? And maybe you all want to explain a little more. You showed pictures of the houses, but maybe exactly uh, you know how large the houses would be, what they entailed. I think before, and I could be getting this confused with something else. We talked about whether they had porches or decks, I believe. We talked a little bit about that, but if you could just uh, talk a little more about that, the specifics around the houses as well. Sure, the, uh, I, think, I think that must have been a different community. I don't think we've actually discussed that before, but we'll be glad to discuss it though. Um, so the, the proposed homes have, uh, a lot of the alley homes have uh, more of a front porch look, and then the, the front load lots won't have as much of a front porch, but they set up more for uh, a backyard, uh, which a lot of the families like where the alley homes may not have near as much of a, of a backyard because that's where your, your driveway is going to be. So um, the backs of our homes typically have a, a concrete patio. We typically build on slabs, so we don't typically do decks. Uh, if we do have some homes that are going to be built on crawl spaces, 
we won't know that until we get further into the engineering and how we can grade the property. Um, but if we do have crawl spaces, then most likely there would be some decks off the backs of the property. There would be no front decks. Um, like if, if you had a front porch, it would not be a deck. It would be, it would still be a concrete uh, front porch. Um, so those decks or, or patios would vary in size, but typically are around eight feet by 10 feet or 10 by 10, something around that size on the backs of the homes. I don't know if that answers your question, Ms. Lee. Thank you, it does. Uh, I didn't know if anybody else had, because I saw somebody had a question, something about how large is the bedroom or something. I, it popped up yeah. really quick. I couldn't see it. Anticipated uh, price point, square footage, and number of bedrooms. Um, I know our homes for this development would be very similar to Heritage, except for obviously the alleys um, and Hardy. They range anywhere from 1,500 square feet all the way up to 2,500 square feet. Bedrooms, minimum three. Mm -hmm. um, price points have not been determined. Um, we try to be obviously competitive in the market, but also providing homes for people. We we try not to outprice the market and outprice the area. It's, yeah, it's definitely something point. we don't. That's definitely something we don't do. We we try not to. You know, the way prices are right now, we could increase prices across the board quite a bit, and really the the price increases we've had have been because of the the massive interior uh, material and fuel prices that have just shot shot up. So our our prices at Heritage Landing have increased, but uh, we're still below market, and um, we do that to try to get more people into homes. Um, but the the cost of the materials have really driven up pricing. So I think we're we're still in the Brandon. Are we still in the upper twos? Or are we in the low threes? We are. We are right at three hundred now for uh, yeah, fifteen hundred square foot. That same home. Uh, just because of the materials costs since all this, what COVID is really when the material costs started going through the roof, uh, it's gone up a good $40,000 per house, if not more, um, just in material costs. So that's, what's driving up quite a bit of the cost as well. Will there be lights along the walking trail? Uh, as far as I know, I would say no, Matt. Yeah, as of that, now, that we, we haven't planned on that, but we could. We could look into that. Yeah, um, that would be that would be a little that would be a, a private thing that we would have to do. Um, it would just the, the only issue I might have with that is the um, that lighting cost would fall on the HOA. Uh, the street lights uh, it's part of the street infrastructure, and you don't have to meter those. Um, but if we are going to light the uh, walking trail with a street light um every single you know every single evening every single night that would fall onto the the, the burden of of the hoa and it would be probably quite expensive for only 86 homes we could look at maybe some little bollards that have some little lights on them that might provide a, a little bit of light but also i'm i, I just don't know if a uh, big tall street type light would be appropriate for a walking trail something more pedestrian friendly uh pedestrian scale Maybe like a bollard with some sort of light. We can look into that. Oh, or what about the lights that when you um on the ground while you all mm -hmm. are developing, you could put them on the ground. Yeah, like a, a a lower light. I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah, we can look into that. It's actually a good idea. Bollard pedestrian bollard lights. Ms. Lee, do you know what I'm talking about when I talk about a bollard light? Uh -oh. Trail lights. Yeah, they're they're like a um, it's kind of like a three to four foot tall uh, post. They come in different styles, and they'll have some sort of a light that's in them that will kind of shine down or or shine just in the immediate area. It, it it doesn't stand up super tall and light up the whole area, but it's it's more pedestrian scale. You see them sometimes along. Okay. Um, I was trying to think. There's a, a uh, a greenway in Nashville that has them. Oh, I can't think of which one. It's not Shelby Bottoms, I don't think. No, it's not Shelby. No. It's no. Yeah, but another, that's, a, that's a very good idea, especially for that area. Yeah. 
Yep. Writing it and down right now. And something else I want to ask you about, I'm going to explain it and, and not do it very well, so I hope you will know what we're talking about. Since um, we had a whole lot dealing with um, cameras and, and, and putting the uh, license plate cameras and all that kind of stuff, I was talking to a policeman about wiring in communities now that when you're doing your your um, building and everything, if you go ahead and put the wiring in now underground, whatever it is, so that then if the community wants to do cameras in their entrance or around, that the wiring will already be there and it'll be a lot easier for them. Okay. Easy. Yeah, yeah we can look into that. Yeah, we, we, did, we actually do have cameras up in our Heritage Landing community. We do, the, right at the, the entry. Entity area. Yeah, at the entry in the amenity area, we have cameras. They're hard to see, That's but they're a good there. Idea. Yeah, yeah, they're hit. They're hidden pretty well. John said, "If you agree to the standards that we have identified, and we'll put that in writing prior to public hearing at planning, there may be a mutually desirable path forward." Uh, you do have it in writing. It'll be part of this in PDF when it goes out. Yep, and we can add the bollard lighting and. Mm -hmm. How are you going to handle the bedrock? Uh, and handle the what? Oh, the bedrock? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it gets handled one way, it, it, it gets blasted. Um, so, uh, similar to what's happened to probably every a lot of communities in Antioch, I won't say every community, but most communities in Antioch, the only way to, get, to handle the bedrock is to uh, blast it. So, it gets drilled, uh, companies that, that Blasting companies will drill holes at minimum eight feet into the ground. They set charges and um, and then they um, set the charge so that it uh, breaks the rock in a way that then the rock's usable for fill material. Um, could you please review price points you recently stated for this community? If you review surrounding developments, they are currently starting with high three hundred thousand, which is where this developer should fall. We'll follow the market when we do. Obviously, open for sales. At, yeah. at that time, there's no there's no telling where they will be. Yeah, I mean, we'll be in line with our adjacent community next door to the southwest. And then Larry Price, why should the community support this development? Top five reasons. You want to hit it, Matt? Yeah. First of all, I think it's going to provide. I mean, there's such a shortage of housing. This could provide housing for the Antioch community. Uh, we're going to be providing uh, sidewalks, community park, uh, pedestrian connection down to the Corps of Engineers, which when you connect this community with the Heritage Landing community, um, it goes all the way over to uh, the Pepper Tree Forest community. I know Pepper Tree Forest doesn't have sidewalks within, but if those residents over there or the Hickory Woods community, they can walk via sidewalk through Heritage Landing, walk down Maxwell Road, the sidewalk, and then you'll be able to enjoy the community park, um, walk through the trails, walk over to the TVA property, which is managed by TWRA. So I think that's that's uh, probably some of the best reasons, I think. And also it's gonna clean up the end of Maxwell Road. Um, just, you know, there's some, as I said, there's some, seedy stuff that, that has gone on in the past down at the end of that road. I mean, we've seen some needles and just a lot of trash and just, I mean, you can see that I think in that photo Brandon shown, there's signs that have been shot with shotguns. So I think, I think this will help clean up that area by uh, keeping people moving, keeping vehicles moving. And um, I think that's a positive for everyone. I had two things that I wanted to um, share or ask you. Uh, one, when you were talking back, because we have a bad problem in this area, whenever any buildings going up, the blasting is terrible. Um, we have folks come out from um, Metro and they say, okay, the noise is the levels that it's supposed to be. But if you're beside that and you have, and where you all are wanting to build, you have communities um, that are already very close and established. So we need somebody to really keep an eye on that blasting and uh, how much blasting you're doing and the um, 
And I suppose you can put charges different amounts about how fast or how hard you want to mm -hmm. blast stuff, but that you are very conscious about if you don't have to do that, it might take you a little longer, but use something lighter because all that blasting is, even though they say it's not, it damages the houses beside it. And I know because I have cracks, I had cracks in my brick and in my sidewalk from blasting and the houses were, I'm gonna say, uh, not a mile, maybe about a mile up the road. So it doesn't wow. have to be right beside it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I'm going to ask is, we talked before about the overcrowdedness of the schools and what were you, uh, how were you going to help with that? And I know whatever that chart is that uh, we asked Metro and they're like, well, you should only have this number of students in mm -hmm. the school. Uh, I would like to ask that you all meet with the um, school board member that covers this area to just have a discussion with her about uh, what she sees, if you could do something to help. Cause I know I have been telling folks in the past to contact the principal. And so I'm mm -hmm. thinking the principals are saying, look, we've got enough stuff going on. I don't know who these people are contacting me. I don't have anything mm -hmm. to say to them. Mm -hmm. So um, right. I'm, I'm thinking if you have a conversation with the school board members in this area, um, and sit down and, and talk with her about what's going on, what you're looking at, and if there was something that could help that community and be a help uh, to the students and the school, that they would share that with you. I don't know sure. if it's something you'd be able to do, something you'd be able to um, get with the Metro and try to help to do or what, but have that conversation. Okay, for sure. Yeah, I think the, the report you're referring to was from the uh, planning commission as a Metro school board report where they, they, they uh, predicted that this community would provide 21 elementary, 15 middle and 16 high extra students. Yeah. yeah. And that, yeah. that is so that is, is not really the case. I don't want to say that their stuff is wrong, but I will put it this way. If we're already overcrowded, it doesn't even matter if it only has one other child to go in, it's still a problem. Okay. Yeah, we'll get what in touch with the local that? board member. Sorry, what school district is that in, um, Antoinette? So this is, oh, do you want me to answer that? I've got the information. So I'm right thinking here. the high schools would be up there to Antioch High School and Correct. Uh, Cane Ridge High School as well, but I think it's more Antioch. Uh, yeah, so it's- And I'm thinking, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I can say it's Antioch High School, JFK Middle and Mount View Elementary. So is that District Six or Seven? I do not know the answer to that. I think it's five. Now I know now. what you're asking me, Cheryl. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay. So you're talking about the member? Board member. She was talking about the school board. Uh, yeah. Yes, the school board representative. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll look it up and we'll find it and we'll get in touch with he or she. Thank you. I think it's she though. Thank you. We'll get in touch with her. Thank you. Matt, this is Billy. I got a question for you. Mm hmm Uh it's an economic type question, probably boring. You got eighty six homes, about three hundred thousand. That's a sell gross selling price of twenty six million when it's all built out. What I'm trying to get a feel for is what's the cost of that? And just for this conversation, let's just say it's 20 million. How much of that 20 million that's gonna be spent to develop this thing will stay in Antioch? In other words, will the materials be bought in Antioch? Will the labor come from Antioch? Or will it be from outside of Antioch? You understand, have I made myself kind of clear? Yeah, I think so. So, Currently, we use different, I'll start with the, the labor question and the materials question. So we do try to utilize the closest facilities to a, to a property. So if there's a local, say, 84 lumber, if there's a local um, uh, plumbing supply, whatever's close to the facility is what we try to utilize if they, if they can keep up. 
we, we do typically build it very quickly. So sometimes some of the supply companies can't keep up with, with how quickly we need it. And here lately with all the supply chain issues, a lot of the uh, suppliers can't keep up. Um, we wait sometimes for windows. I mean, at Heritage Landing, we had a house, houses sitting there for two months framed that couldn't go any further because we couldn't get windows. So supply chain has to do with where and when we get materials. But I do know that we try to keep things close because the closer you keep them, the quicker you can get them. Um, it also provides for the community. Um, as far as the labor goes, we do have vendors. They have to sign up through our company's vendor process. We are a corporate company. And so if, if a, a local company wants to work with us, uh, we, we send them through our local uh, or our corporate vendor setup process. Uh, part of that is insurance requirements to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, that they're licensed, they're bonded, they uh, have a safe record so that uh, they're providing and they're holding the correct amount of insurance and the correct type of insurance to work on our sites so that, um, you know, we're, we don't, we, we aren't capable of hiring, um, say, someone who is, um, Kind of flying by the seat of their pants. I'll put it that way. We have to have someone that's professional and and make sure that they're doing it the right way. So a lot of those companies are based all around Nashville. I couldn't tell you exactly who's based in Antioch. I think one of our painters has been based in Antioch, and maybe Framer Painter. One Antioch. of our Framer has been yeah. One of our Framers has been based in Antioch, but I would have to research that to find out which of our vendors are actually based in Antioch. Um, but we're always on the lookout for new vendors, for sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Because everyone is so busy, um, it's hard to to find more. So if we can find vendors that are reliable and good at what they do and they're based in Antioch, absolutely. If they want to become a vendor with DR Horton, we would love to have them. Um, the financial question, I'm going to do my best to handle that. Um, basically, so typically the for for this type of site, rough numbers it's going to cost just in cost by the time you pay for uh, your professional services your engineering your surveying um, you pay your metro fees you pay your capacity fees um, you pay for um, all the erosion control inspections um, i'm trying to think of things that aren't actually like hard cost um, you pay for uh, you know concrete washout removals and you pay for port johns and all those different things that go into construction sites. And then you pay for all the, the labor and the uh, site work, all the materials, the asphalt, the storm drainage, the water pipe, the sewer pipe, all of that. You pay for the blasting. You pay for everything. Um, it, it's going to cost somewhere, depending on how much earth you have to move, depending on how much you have to blast, it could cost upwards of sixty to $80,000 per lot. Because that also includes all of your um, open space, all your plantings, all your park features, all your playground, everything that you're going to install, street lights, everything. All that cost gets lumped in, and then you can divide it out on a per lot basis. And it's it could be somewhere sixty to eighty thousand. That's kind of what we're seeing in the adjoining community. Those contracts were from a while ago, though. So going forward, we're seeing prices in other parts of town that I mean, we're seeing by the time you pay for construction and then you pay for the land, we're seeing just lot prices close to or at $100,000 a lot. So just the lot itself. Um, and then of course the home part, uh, you're paying for all the uh, materials, the labor, everything that goes into the home and then uh, profit on top of that. So yes. it's, I don't know if I if that exactly answers your question, but there's a lot that goes into oh, yeah, it. Very well, you covered more than I was even thinking about. But <laughs> okay. the impression I get is that this will this development would provide. I don't know if significant is the right word, but a pretty good input into the Antioch community as far as financial money going into people working for you. It has potential for sure. Absolutely. Okay. That's what I was trying to get at. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I see the greener way to garden. 
Oh, I saw ahead, something Leslie. in all of the information that um, John had listed, and I know that you all were looking at that too to see what could be incorporated into what you're doing. But I know a piece of it was he asked about all of the um, power lines and everything. And it was my understanding that now power lines are going underground. Yes, in, in the community, they'll stay underground. Um, along Maxwell Road, uh, that line is overhead. And when we developed the Heritage Landing community, uh, NES elected to keep that line overhead. So the line along Maxwell would most likely stay overhead unless NES changes their mind. Uh, but inside the community, yes, absolutely, everything will be underground. No overheads whatsoever. Think. Yeah, a green or a garden center and Antioch can supply landscape materials. Um, I'll tell you, if you're representing a green or a garden center, the best for, you can get a hold of Rose Creek Landscaping because they are doing the majority of our landscaping there right now. Yeah, that would be someone good to contact. Yeah, Rose Creek Landscaping. They're doing the landscape work in the Heritage Landing community right next right next door. So I'm not sure what you know what nursery and what suppliers they use, but if they could find something right next door. And of course, right now, we don't, we don't know. We're, we're so far out, we wouldn't be able to tell you who, who we'll be using for landscaping yet. So we have about um, a little under 10 minutes left. If anybody else has a, a, a comment or something that was not put in the, uh, uh, chat room now would be the time to do that. Um, I will ask this though, if this goes through, um, and this is usually asked, I know it still has to go through a lot of different um, procedures. Um, how long would it, it, do you see before this actually uh, to get started? And then how long do you think it'll take and will you do the whole thing? Or are you going in sections or what? Well, if, if, uh, let me start with the rezoning process. Of course, we've got to go through council readings, which obviously, you know, a lot about. <laughs> uh, so we go through 3 council. Meetings, um, after that, we will have to submit and Jubal, correct me if I'm wrong. We'll have to submit a concept plan. To Metro planning. And then our final site plan slash construction plans. Uh, and that goes through all the different Metro departments. It goes through planning. Uh, Nashville DOT, which used to be called public works, stormwater, uh, water and sewer, which are same department, really. Uh, it goes to urban forester, um, Metro fire will review it. And I'm probably missing somebody else, another Metro department, but it goes through the, the full process. Um, that takes a long time. Uh, just our, our last phase of heritage landing, which was 92 lots, I believe. Very similar in size, just a little bit larger. It took us nearly 10 months to get those plans approved. Um, it's just the backup in the system takes so long. So if we were uh, just uh, rezoning and then planning approvals through planning commission and then uh, construction plan approval, we're looking at probably 15 months, maybe even best case, hopefully not. Hopefully maybe we can get our plans approved quicker. Um, but just based on the past 18 months, it appears that it, it's taking a long time to get plans approved through Metro. Um, after that, we would probably build this in one phase. Um, and would probably take somewhere around 12 months, perhaps. So you might be looking at 15 plus 20, you know, 27 months. You'd be looking at probably 2 years from now, roughly before homes would go under construction. Most likely. And all that could change, you know, depending on how quickly things get approved through Metro. You said Fran Bush is the school board member. Ah, oh, okay. Good. Yes. Fran Bush. Yes. Yeah. I gotcha. And I am going to ask in case there were some questions uh, that did not get on here or some suggestions that did not get uh, talked about today. Can somebody right quick? I'm sure that they have it. 
can somebody put your um, email address uh, in the chat right quickly? And if you will get um, all of this that you have shown to uh, Roseanne, mm -hmm. we will be the ones to send it out to everybody who was on the um, the the Zoom today. Well, the WebEx today. <laughs> um, and we have like five more minutes. So, is there anybody who hadn't had a chance to talk or a question that got missed or anything? Uh, if you would like to um, say something. Now is a good time. Yeah, and I do want to reiterate. So we have cameras at our cluster boxes as well, Matt and Heritage. Oh, that's right. Probably. Yeah, that's one thing we didn't discuss. We talked about last time, Ms. Lee. Um, the Postal Service now requires cluster boxes uh, instead of individual mailboxes. So when we when we do cluster boxes, we always try to cover them just so people don't have to stand there in the rain. Uh, and and we and we provide cameras at those as well. So that if someone's there getting their mail at night, at least, you know, it's lit, has lighting, and there's a camera. Yeah, it's not just in the middle of the night. Right. Anybody else? Hey, Matt, I don't know if yes. you already um, answered this or talked about it, about the infrastructure. Are you all putting in new pipes and all of that, or are you going to be utilizing what's already there? No, we'll be doing all new. There's really nothing there already. Yeah, rock. yeah it'll be all new. Okay. And then it'll, I mean, with those street lights alone, it'll light up the dead end of Maxwell. So that'll, that'll freshen that up a lot, especially for the church. I'm not sure if they're lighting. I would assume they're going to light their parking lot. I'm not sure, but oh, that will help yeah, them as they'll well. They'll have to. Yeah, they'll have to per Metro codes, so they'll, they'll be permanent lights on at the parking lot of the church. I know. They're excited to see this happen as well. Yeah, I believe we sent that letter. Uh, Brandon, did you forward that letter to Roseanne? I did uh, just okay. earlier today. I know I got it the other day. Okay. But you might have that answer, Matt. Okay. So, and I'll check with Rosie because uh, I see somebody, um, John, of course, sent it out today. Oh, great, yeah. great, great. John, of course, wanted this to go to the Cane Ridge Trust. But like I said, again, if you get that to uh, Rosie, please, she'll mm -hmm. send it to everybody who's, um, in fact, not on here, but she'll send it to everybody that's in my, on, on the database, in the database, so that they will have that as well. Um, we are getting ready to get out of here. So if you hadn't put in your chat, because I think once we close, the chat will be closed too. If you haven't put your contact information over there, please make sure you do that. Um, I want to thank everybody so very much for taking um, away from your meal time or whatever to share this with us. Um, looks like we're getting a, a little closer. Uh, there's still some things that you all um, need to do, uh, the people you need to talk to, that type of thing. But I really appreciate you coming and sharing this information with us. Is there something that anybody else needs to put out right quick that won't wait? Ms. Roseanne, as always, you know, I am so indebted to you for all that you do. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you everyone for being on here. Um, and I hope everybody has a great and safe afternoon. Matt, thank you for you and your crew presenting. You're welcome. And everybody have a good evening. Thank you. you too. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, everyone. Thank you. Please thank you, do. Roseanne, for keeping us straight. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you.